Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are still at Indie Bios demo day number eight. We are now gonna be speaking with Alex Lewis. Hello. Hey. Thanks so much for coming yeah, on the show. Yeah, absolutely, my pleasure. Really appreciate it. CEO of Electroactive Technologies. That's right, yeah. All right, what was what was the talk on the main yeah, stage Yeah, we about? just, you know, all the companies at Indie Bios gave a seven minute pitch and for us, we're you know developing this modular system to convert food waste into renewable hydrogen, which can power zero emission vehicles, you know, going into the future here. And so we're, yeah, developing this kind of local urban solutions, food waste produced in the city can stay in the city to make fuel that can be used to power zero emission transportation in the city. So look, yeah, looking to make everything more sustainable and find a better use of food waste, which is, a, you know, 40% of food is wasted. It's a crazy amount. And so we, we're, you know, we're trying to find a higher value use of that, which we think can, you know, turn into zero emission fuels, you know, at an economical uh, price. Yeah, when I saw what you guys were doing out there, it totally spoke to me as the future of cities and um, the future of sustainable ecosystems mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. And so, okay, so let's walk through this. So we have something like our compost. First mm -hmm. of all, the statistic is crazy, 40%. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, yeah. Just up and down the supply chain, you know, it starts at the farm, happens in transport, happens at the restaurant, at businesses, and then in the home. It's just across the board, you know, 40% is lost. Or, you know, close to 40%, you know, it depends on the country, but it's, 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 a, it's a high amount. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in supermarkets. Too, yeah, all, all, those, all those, anyone that has food, food or selling food, it's, you know, it's happening. Up and down supply yeah. chain, that's why it's so high. Yeah. Okay. And it's, yeah, in the homes, when the, in the fridge, when you yeah, don't get to Yeah, and that's the biggest, biggest chunk is in the home. Yeah, in yeah. In the restaurants. Interesting. Okay, and then, so, okay, so then um, that's getting, okay, so first of all, we got to live in cities where we're composting more. Like, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we still, some cities only have, like, garbage. Yep. Don't even have recycling. Yep. And then you got to add the last one, just compost. <laughs> yep, yep. And then we got to do things like the biodegradable farmers to not even have some of mm -hmm. the issues with yes. some of the stuff yep. as well. Okay, and then we take compost, and then you have this what, what do you call the modular, what do you call that? Yeah, it's, it's, I guess you, we, what we refer to as a stack because we're stacking together our reactors to make a larger stack. And so we have this, our, our, our system is called the EH2Gen, okay. which is you know, a kind of a combination of our names here, but, but it's a, this modular system that can really you know, give it some flexibility about where it can be placed and at what scale. Because a lot of the solutions typically need this huge plant that has to be located a long distance away. But our modular system can then be you know, plugged into cities in different spots and plopped down wherever it's needed. And so it gives a lot more flexibility to, to go where the problem is. Okay, and so this modular system mm -hmm. right now is, is, is small and compact yeah, version yeah. of it, but eventually you see it as Yeah, yeah so right now we have a small prototype about this size, but what we're looking at is more of like a shipping container size unit, which would have thousands of our cells in there. And that could be dropped down and scaled you know, up or down from that point to, to meet the needs, how much waste there is, how much hydrogen that could be used. And so it gives us some let's, flexibility. Let's get into the technicality. So, yeah. okay, so we take this 40% of food waste. Uh -huh. All right, and then what are we doing with the compost into the modular yeah. system? Yeah, and so right now, like in California, luckily they're you know, ahead, of, ahead of the curve and, are, and already have that third collection. And m most of it goes to composting, but it has to be, a lot of times it's still trucked out 200 miles from where it's produced. And so getting it to compost and doing that is good, but it's, you know, there, it's not, it's, it's, it's a starting point. And so for us, and, the, and it's also really inefficient because only a fraction of what's in that food waste ends up being in the compost. And so our process being located you know, closer to the city can take that food waste, suck out a lot of the liquid and soluble compounds that we use to make hydrogen. And then the smaller amount that's left over can be sent on to composting, which is a smaller amount, less trips out there, and is also just a better input for composting. So it can really improve the entire chain while getting a lot more value out of it. And then what are we doing with, because we've mm -hmm. seen now, yeah, the massive going and getting uh -huh. tours of it's actually mm -hmm. really enlightening the garbage recycling and composting facilities. When you're there mm -hmm. and then, you, like, for example, you guys take and blend the compost and then you feed it into the Yeah, so and, we, and yeah we, we are focusing on the food waste aspect of it, but we're, our goal is to get to the municipal stage where there's, you know, there's paper or other compostable things in there. Okay. And so it'll be pre-processed and that, a lot of that stuff will just come through and come out because we're taking the liquid fraction out of that. And so when we do that pre-processing step, this other stuff that's destined for composting will kind of come through and not go into our system. We'll take the liquid part out that comes from the food waste, and that's what gets feds into our system. And we have microbes that grow in there that are able to degrade that waste and extract energy out of that, which we use to make hydrogen. 
Okay, so let's so keep going with this process. So yeah. we have how how do we feed blended compost into? Mm -hmm. uh, so this is like a soil that has microbes in it. Yeah, and, well, so that's where we, that's where we kind of originally get some of the microbes. Is these all the microbes we have are pretty are pretty much naturally occurring in soil, but we've we've taken it out and kind of directed them towards the function we want to have happen. Okay. And so they'll be break these microbes exist in soil to break down you know leaves and things that happen. Okay. But we've taken those and really concentrated them and enhanced their functions in our reactor, okay. so they can just get waste, break it down, and we can mm. take the energy from it. Okay, so as the microbes, you, the concentration of microbes mm. is breaking down this blended yep. waste, um, they're producing electricity? Yeah, it's, it sounds strange, and, but there's a <laughs> special class of microbes that, again, we haven't genetically engineered. They're out there in the soil where they typically work to, to reduce iron and other metals that are in soil, because when you start breaking things down just naturally cycles, there has to be a, a place for you to, to dump the electrons that come off in these reactions. Um, so not to get too technical, but there's these microbes that instead of producing a gas or, or uh, breathing or passing electrons to air to make CO2, they can just pass the electrons directly to a metal or, or carbon. And so we grow the microbes on an electrode where they can just pass the electrons directly. Wow. And so they work with the other microbes breaking down the food waste and we just accept the electrons um, as they're produced. And so the microbes grow on that collector and we just take the electrons as they're produced and use them to make hydrogen on the other side of the reactor. And so there's a lot happening in this little compact reactor. Whoa, okay, <laughs> the microbes are right on the electrodes. Yeah. So they're passing right as they're yeah. going through yep. the process with the food waste, yeah. passing the electron mm -hmm. through the electrode. <laughs> and then you guys, how do you then in this closed system turn that into yeah. so, hydrogen so, fuel? Yeah, so our, 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 our reactor is actually two chambers. So there's two sides of the reactor. You can think of it as a sandwich. There's two sides and separated by some cheese, which for us is a membrane. And so we have a membrane separating the two sides. Microbes are going on one side, eating the waste, making all those electrons, and they're passed to the other side, which where just an electrochemical reaction happens with a, a metal catalyst. And so the electrons that come off, and protons that also come off, go to the other side, and we make hydrogen. Okay, an electrochemical reaction. Yeah, and so it pairs biology and electrochemistry to make the hydrogen. Whoa. Yeah, and it's okay. just all in this small little stack. Sweet. And Sweet. That, <laughs> okay, and then, and then, okay, so with the, um, the, and the electrochemical reaction leaves you with hydrogen? Yeah, pure, pure source pure of hydrogen. hydrogen? Yeah. And that's the benefit okay. for our system where, because we have these two sides of the reactor, so the hydrogen being produced is kind of separated, because the microbes still, they do produce CO2 and other gases. Okay. Um, but so it's good that our, the hydrogen re re reaction is happening separate from that. Okay. And so that, that way all those gases, the other things that are happening on the microbial side is separated from the reaction that yes. makes hydrogen. So we have a pure reaction of hydrogen being made there which you know, is really beneficial for downstream processing and, and purification where yes. you know, it's a much simpler thing to do. Yeah, and then there's even potentially a way to capture this CO2. Yeah, thing yeah, and, and we're working, working on making that also a very pure stream where yeah, that, uh, this renewable source of CO2 could, could be used in another application, could end up being another yeah. revenue stream for us. Well, so, so blended compost from our like, offices and our yep. homes and these commercial sites and all mm. these places, farms, all these places can then be used to feed microbes with eat on that, produce electricity that we can then use as hydrogen power to then power the electricity in our homes or in our cars or all different. Yeah, and in transport we see is where the initial benefits would be um, because batteries in, in electric cars are great, but they have some limitations and there needs to be you know, an, you know, some additional options out there where batteries in electric vehicles are great, but you have the low, low range, can't drive the same distance as normal cars, and it's a longer refueling process. So fuel cell cars, you have the same experience of gasoline and diesel cars, just the same amount of range, rapid refueling, but it's an electric vehicle still, just runs on hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And so those benefits are really even more so for the heavy duty vehicles, big trucks and buses. Um, fuel, uh, you know, the transit fleets here in San Francisco have fuel cell buses in their, in their mix. And so that's where we see you know, the initial markets happening are in those heavy duty areas. But hydrogen can also be used in a fuel cell to make electricity for homes and other areas. Um, but with cost of electricity being pretty low from solar and wind, you know, electricity will probably, ele normal electricity will probably still be the main trend. Where hydrogen comes into play on that end actually is because while feed w food waste is our feedstock, there's also, you know, a, a strong amount that's coming from electricity as well. So the microbes make electrons, we also take external electrons to make hydrogen. It's not just the electrons from food waste, we oh. take in additional electricity input from, okay. from like solar or wind. And so as solar and wind continue to grow, it's, it's produced at times when people don't use it and it goes to waste. And so you need um, to be able to store, yeah. store that electricity and that's what we can do with ours. It gets stored as hydrogen and it can, be, and can sit there until you need it and can be turned back into electricity 
to use in cities oh. or can go into hmm. transport. And so it's, it's a really versatile way to store and carry energy. And it's, you know, does so in a zero emission, you know, fashion. And so it's really, you know, it's really, you know, changing the landscape of energy. Okay, so you would also potentially on these commercial sites or residential sites or um, farm sites that mm -hmm. you would have um, solar and wind power uh, potentially as mm -hmm. well on these sites. And then when what happens sometimes is when your when your capacity mm -hmm. is full on mm -hmm. the energy storage, you need to then convert that electricity mm -hmm. into um, mm -hmm. hydrogen fuel mm -hmm. cells, mm -hmm. and that, that's where you guys could help. Yeah, yeah, and, and, it's, okay. and it's more at the city scale as well. Where and looking at California specifically, they I mean they curtailed a crazy amount of electricity last year where you know, that could, that could power more than the entire hydrogen market where this, this is much electricity is going to waste because they're, it's produced at times and people don't use it. And right now battery storage is just too expensive and it can only be, you know, for a two hour period. When you use electricity to make hydrogen, it can sit there for days and months and then be used when needed. So there's like seasonal storage. So, so in wind or solar, uh -huh. I, the battery, mm -hmm. we, that, that electrical charge is, is only good for- It's, it's only good for a short amount of short time, amount of time. Where you need, it could, and if it's, once you charge the battery, it starts dissipating over time. And then once you start using it, it's gone within two hours. And so it's a really, same with electric cars, it's kind of a dynamic thing where it's you know, short term, low range, which is really good for rapid response. Yeah. But as, as you know, renewable electricity becomes like 50% of the mix, you know, instead of five, the amount of storage you need, you know, over the long term yeah. is, is high and only hydrogen can really provide that kind of oh, storage where it can sit and it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, you don't lose the energy oh. and it can be turned back in. Huh. So there's all these multi-pronged benefits from hydrogen. Well, that's um, an interesting it's, point. It's interesting. Yeah, that when the hydrogen works really well as a store over time. Yeah, that's a and you can use it in transport for the vehicles or you can tr use it in a fuel cell to turn it back into electricity for a building. And so, yeah, it has transport. You, it can also be used, you know, down the line instead of natural gas. Hydrogen can be used in the home for, you know, for heating and cooking as a gas because it is a gas. Mm. And so, it can replace natural gas long term in in those type of applications as well. So, it really has this ability to decarbonize the entire, you know, spectrum of the economy. So, there's a lot of lot of a uh, lot of momentum behind hydrogen, but still a lot of work to go to, to you know, to bring it to the to the masses. And then you see the modular unit that mm -hmm. you're putting together. Um, b you're seeing it both iterating over time to make it more and more efficient, the processes, but also mm -hmm. then in terms of size, you see it potentially on each individual like home or business, or do you see one in a big community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see we see it more at the community level, but you know, long term, as you know, as the cost of everything starts to come down and things change, um, it could certainly potentially be in the home. But right now, you know, community level or at the at the stage where you know these huge apartment complexes that are here at that kind of level, the amount of waste in all, all the homes within that big complex and building would be enough. You know, at, at an area where you have a small radius of you know ten restaurants in a, you know a couple block radius, at that kind of you know network scale is what we're looking at um, to be at the community level and have these positioned to, to take the waste in a small radius to avoid, you know, right now, you know, as I mentioned, the food waste getting trucked out 200 miles, you're also trucking in fuel from hundreds of miles, keeping yeah. it all in this kind of network, yeah, yeah. you know, reduces cost, but it also makes the whole system more robust where, you know, there's not one thing that gets knocked out or goes, if there's a problem, disrupts the entire thing. If you have multiple sites all around, it kind of creates a better, you know, smart city as we talked about at the beginning, yeah, just yeah. a smart, sustainable city. Yeah. And then uh, just another thought is as an input is compost, like blended compost. Uh -huh. I mean, if we're really a smart city, mm -hmm. we won't have compost, right? We would, yeah, yeah. So then what would be like an alternative? Yeah, and so there's, you know, in, in, as a public benefit corporation, we, you know, we support, you know, just food waste, not going to waste and stuff that's edible, getting to people in need to be able to use that. And, but unfortunately there's such a, a substantial amount that can't be safely recovered that there's really no pathway to have no, no, food surplus at any point. So we'll always have a feedstock on that end. Um, but there's other, other things that can go into it as well where we're you know, working with testing animal manure and other things that you know, could be an input. That's anything organic can really go in there. You know, the, the, big, the, big, uh, the other things that change is how much you have to pre-process it. If you took a tree, which is organic, it will require a lot more pre-processing to get it to a liquid. So starting with food waste is, you know, is, the, you know, is a big problem on its own and is a best starting point for us. You can also take wastewater, which has a lot of organics in there as well. Um, so it's really any organic feed could come in there. Food waste is, you know, is a big problem and starting point for us that we want to address. 
Yeah, this <laughs> these I'm super excited to see what other combinations of like modular units for sustainability and in future cities that we're going to move towards. These are very exciting. Yeah, but, yeah. There's there's a lot of cool things being done on that realm that we really want to partner up and pair with. Um, you know, as just being a part of that solution for how you, all these you know all the all the ways that cities are becoming smarter and integrating things that we you know, we just want to be a part of that solution and, and contribute to that. So it's, it's really exciting the things that are happening in that area. It would be cool to see kids also growing up seeing these and playing with them. Yeah, and that's so. one of the things we're looking at actually for, for pilots is some of these elementary schools and high schools are, are actually uh, pretty self-motivated to implement their own composting programs even though they're not required to yet. And they're doing that and so we're looking at you know doing pilots there where we can do these demonstration units where the small amount of hydrogen produced at that scale could be used instructionally to talk about fuel cells and, and get you know, the kid, next generation of kids excited about you know, engineering in these clean tech areas. And um, so yeah, it would be great to, to get these deployed at schools and, and, uh, and yeah, start, start the exposure early to really, because uh, that's where it re requires is you know, people who are just used to that kind of lifestyle and just, you know, they'll grow up and think, wait, people didn't use to compost? Like why, why is that, why would that ever happen? Yeah. And so that's what we're kind of going towards and, and schools are, you know, they're, you're a great place to, to start doing things. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a huge question is that uh, where, where in 50 years uh, are we going to look and say, I can't believe we were doing those archaic things. <laughs> um, that's a really good way to realize what we need to be doing today. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Alex, <laughs> thanks for coming on to the show. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it. It was great chatting with you. Yeah, huge and, uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll have to check in again you know, later on and see where we're at. Yeah, exactly. We love doing updates totally. Yeah, absolutely. I would love for everyone to check out the links in the bio below. Electroactive Technologies, again, you can find the link in the bio below. Go and support them. Them, check them out. Also check out Indie Bio as well. Check out that link in the bio below. Have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online on social media about things like we discussed in this episode. And support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations around the world that you believe in support simulation. Our links are below as well. Go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Peace.